Austin, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Boy, you guys got some great content up on the site this morning. Um, every time I flip over there, there's something new and uh, something different and, uh, and, uh, and a look at it. And as I pointed out time and time again with you guys at Illinois Policy, you guys are quick to uh, lay out a criticism, but you're equally quick then to offer up a solution. This isn't just a, we're going to throw darts at a dartboard and walk away. You guys have plans to go along with what you're criticizing. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, we always say the biggest, uh, the biggest enemy we go up against is not any particular lawmaker or a policy choice. It's apathy. And there's been so many years in Illinois where people feel hopeless in the legislative process. Uh, they feel like they're powerless in Springfield. So we try to exist to give a voice to those people and not only a voice, but some power to influence uh, the decisions that affect our, our businesses and our families uh, every day in Springfield. When you go to Illinois Policy this morning, you'll see right near the top, moving company ranks Illinois second in nation for outbound moves. This is not anything new. This is a continuation, but well worth a look. And then there's the other piece that uh, is well worth a look. This is one that uh, you wrote, Austin, came out uh, 13th of November of last year. And that's uh, incoming Illinois House Democrat calls for no vote on Madigan for Speaker. Wednesday, we get right back into action, don't we? Exactly. Wednesday is the inauguration for the new Illinois General Assembly. And yeah, there is definitely an outlier this time. For the first time in history, there is an incoming Illinois House Democrat that has declared her intention uh, to reject Madigan as Speaker of the House. We all know he's, he's had the speakership for all but two years, since 1983. The no American has led a state House of Representatives longer than Madigan. Uh, and Kind of the, the, this rare sign of dissent really highlights the ways that he has been able to, to accrue and cement power over the legislative process and the political process in Illinois. It's, it's pretty astounding the iron grip that one man has had on this entire state. How many, how many people are in that district that put him there every year? Or every, so every election, only, rather. Sure, yeah, every every couple of years. The last five elections I, I looked at this, I believe it was only around 22,000 voters uh, on average that, that put him in Springfield. So it's a very small number of people. And it is, it, it is uh, also a small number of people when we talk about state lawmakers who, um, who vote for him for House Speaker every two years. And that's truly where a lot of his power comes from. And I've been I've, I've been writing about Madigan for 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 three years. I don't think anyone has written about him more than me. Um, and really, one of the main lessons is that in this vote for Speaker, uh, there is no real choice. We see Ann Stava Murray in uh, the Democrat in Naperville saying that she will vote present. But really, the fact that he is able to wield so much power over the legislative process means that a lot of state lawmakers are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They get into Springfield. They want to be able to represent their constituents. If they do not fall into line on this vote, they can lose their ability to move bills through committee. They will have their bills stuck in the rules committee, which is one of the main ways Madigan uh, is able to influence the legislative process. Uh, he can dictate when bills are called for a vote. You effectively become uh, a, a very poor representative. Uh, you risk becoming a very poor representative of your constituents if you do not fall in the line on this vote. On the other hand, we know how unpopular it is. So it is really a very, very difficult decision that just highlights how one person has, has been able to cement so much power. And when I read your story here uh, about Ms. Murray saying that, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, declare president, I, I'm not going to vote for all that, part of me thought right off the bat, okay, well, the people in your district aren't going to get much, are they? Right, and that's really the difficult choice, and, and it, it could be the case that folks in uh, her district said, we're sending you there for one reason, and it is to not vote for this person for speaker. If, if that's the case, then, then she is doing exactly right by her constituents that she should press on. Um, and the other thing besides the rules, actually, that, that threatens uh, folks if they choose to go against them is, is the fact that he's the only legislative leader in the nation to head a state political party. So he is chairman of the Democratic Party of Illinois. He controls, in, in that way, he controls not only the policy, but also the, the politics and the purse strings at the same time. So you risk getting a primary opponent if you go against him on this vote. Um, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, though. I, I would want to say to folks, as just as we said at the beginning, 
the fact that Madigan is so concerned with the politics of it all actually gives us an opportunity. Uh, and, and if enough members of his caucus feel threatened uh, on a certain vote, whether that's a gas tax hike or some other vote, um, he has to respond to that because he does not want to lose his majority and thus his speakership. So I don't want to, I, I don't want to, uh, to say that all is lost. Just because we have this very, uh, this very, I would say, anti-democracy uh, general assembly right now, controlled by one person, it doesn't mean all is lost. We're spending some time with Austin Berg. He's director of content strategy for Illinois Policy, IllinoisPolicy.org. Spending a little time talking about uh, Mike Madigan and, and and how the vote and all that is going to go. Now, here's a question: Since you know you you've written extensively on Madigan, you 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 know what what, what makes him tick or what's going on. What's the relationship between uh, he and the incoming governor, J.B. Pritzker? It's going to be difficult to say. We, it's, it's hard to say until the rubber meets the road, right? There's lots of campaign uh, talk, and there's lots of behind-the-scenes negotiations. But uh, it's really going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Madigan has dealt with a lot of governors from both parties, and all of them at one point or another uh, become, there is a sticking point. And the problem is that Given Madigan has such autocratic control over how a bill is able to move, uh, the the governor and him, if they disagree on something, there becomes, uh, we might as well say, an impasse. Uh, we saw that, of course, with Governor Bruce Rauner, two years of state government shut down over such, such issues. So uh, I am cautiously optimistic that... Uh, Madigan and Pritzker will provide some sort of check on one another, but it will remain to be seen what policy choices they actually end up making. So for those who are thinking, okay, these guys are buddy-buddy, they're going to move in lockstep, anything that Madigan ever wanted to get done, now is the time he's got a guy who's going to greenlight all that, and then uh, we'll, 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 do the, uh, we'll, we'll do the photo negative and everything that uh, Pritzker wants, Madigan's going to get behind, look out now, this is going to move along, but that's not a guarantee. No, and, and you have to think about the motivations there. Madigan's motivations, as, as they have always shown, had been shown to be by his actions, are political power. So if there is a policy choice that uh, Pritzker wants to make, let's say uh, a big issue right now is the progressive tax, Madigan has signaled that he, he, he wants to move a progressive income tax as well. At Illinois Policy, we've explained extensively why that would be such a terrible policy solution for the state. But... You have to remember that you have a lot of incoming Democrats in Madigan's caucus uh, that live in districts with people who would face a tax hike under such a system, and he knows that their reelection could be threatened depending on how that bill shakes out. So that's just one example of how uh, you know the policy ideas of the governor, for instance, could threaten the political priorities of the speaker. And, and I would expect to see um, to see that on a few issues. I guess, Austin, the thing that is somewhat frightening about all of this is the priorities of the state and its citizenry have not entered this conversation one iota. Exactly. Um, it's and, political and power and, uh, and, and, and what we're going to do and uh, we'll do within our own party and all that. But none of this seems to be geared toward getting Illinois out of the malaise that we're in, stop the hemorrhage of our citizens going elsewhere and other problems. Right. Uh, I, I totally agree with that. That's sort of our reason for being, if you want, if you want to call it that. So, uh, what I'm very encouraged by in meeting with lawmakers, there is a bipartisan support for ideas like a true balanced budget amendment or a spending cap amendment. And what we're going to be working on this month, and we've already been working on previous months uh, since November, are ideas that are that a Democrat can get on board with and say, "Hey, I know Madigan's not popular." But here's a solution that we can actually push to get our state out of the enormous debt that it's in, to help address our out-migration problem, to actually give people some certainty, especially in their tax bill, uh, that allows them to plant roots in Illinois and flourish. So I am I'm encouraged by that. I'm glad to hear that you are, because you're we're very well plugged into what's going on, so your encouragement can be translated to ours, and, 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 and hopefully that will bear some good fruit. Uh, get over to Illinois Policy, you guys. IllinoisPolicy.org, as I mentioned, great site to bookmark. You'll learn a lot. Uh, challenge your mind every single day with the great stuff they have. And Austin, outstanding piece on that, and we really appreciate you taking time out of your day for us. Thanks a lot, Riley. Appreciate it.